Tonight, from Nashville, Tennessee, and the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, your guest star hosts, Dolly Parton, Roy Acuff, Minnie Pearl, and Loretta Lynn, proudly present a country music celebration, an hour of good time music featuring the stars of the Grand Ole Opry, Stonewall Jackson, Billy Walker, Gene Shepard, Ray Pillow, The Wilburn Brothers, Charlie Lubin, Justin Tubb, Dan Howard, The Fifth Willis Trio, and special guest star Ernest Tubb. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roy Acuff. You know, it's nice to share the evening with a lot of my Grand Ole Opry friends. One especially I want to tell you about. When he was just a young man, he came from down Georgia with, driving a pickup truck. He drove to the city limits and he he was actually a country boy, and he's afraid to drive inside the city. So he took his old guitar out of the truck, parked it over the side of the road, and walked up to WSM on the fifth floor of the National Life and Accident Insurance Company and walked into the Solomon judge. He said, Judge, I want to get on the Grand Ole Opry. And the judge said, well, we never have heard anything of you. He said, well, let me sing for you and see if I can make an impression. So he sang him a song or two, and he called for the other man to come in and help him out. And when he did, why, George D. Hayes said, that's one of the cutest boys that we've had on the opera in a long time. He came to the opera without any hit song whatsoever, but it wasn't long before he was one of the top. He had recorded some great songs, such as Don't Be Angry and Life to Go and Waterloo and all those things, but he's just an old piece of coal. But one day, he'll be a diamond. That's Stonewall Jackson. <laughs> I'm real proud to be here, and the reason I stood around here, and I want to tell you something. I, I'm kind of a homebody myself, but uh, there's another fellow that's here on the Grand Ole Opry with me that uh, if there's a big party going on or one of those happy hours or something, I'm sure you're going to find him there, probably uh, making a mess out of himself. 
Anyway, here's Ray Feldman. Thank you very much, Stonewall. You know, I'm sure that did a lot to help my reputation. <laughs> but you know, sitting here at Tootsie's Orchid Lounge brings back a lot of fond memories to me. You know, when we were doing the Opry over at the old Ryman Auditorium, we used to walk across here on Saturday night, and it was so crowded you couldn't even get to the bar. But when we did get to the bar, we met with other fans, we met with other musicians, other singers. We had some good times. In fact, I can remember some of those, and I can remember on Sunday morning waking up feeling just a little bit wasted. Now, here he is, Ray Pillow. Daylight flows, a good shot out. I know where I'm going, but I remember where I've been. Preacher man talking on the radio about the price you pay for sin. But it's 6 a.m. Here I am, wasted again, wasted again. here and kill some time some of my good time friends it's a hell of a situation I'm in wasted again confusion's a state and I've been forced to live in Love's a place I've been But I'll never go again A sidewalk drunk keeps fussing back The price you pay for gin But it's 1 p.m. And here I am Wasted again Wasted again It's a hell of a situation I'm in, wasted again. It's a hell of a situation I'm in, wasted again. Once again, Stonewall Jackson. Waterloo, Waterloo, where it used to be, dear Waterloo. Everybody had a day, everybody had a day. Everybody has to be in Waterloo. I don't ask. On first in the history, but that apple, he was tempted in. This was fine. The devil made him take a bite. And that's the girl that had a bad bitch water. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dolly Parker. You know, sometimes you're asked to do things that you don't particularly want to do, and then sometimes you're asked to do things that you just jump at the chance to do. And when I was asked if I would like to introduce Gene Shepard, I said, by all means, because when I was growing up back in Sevier County, um, I always thought of Gene Shepard and Kitty Wells as the pioneers for girl singers in country music. And I love Jeannie. I think she's one of the funniest people I've ever known, certainly one of the great stylists of our time. And so it's with great pleasure that I get to introduce to you my good friend, Jeannie Shepard.
right now we'd like for you to a real good friend of mine who's been a member of the Grand Ole Opry for many, many years and an awfully good singer, Mr. Billy Walker. The tall Texan, as he's known to friends, hitchhiked 80 miles as a teenager to appear on his first radio show. He was a member of the Ozark Jamboree before joining the Grand Ole Opry back in 1960. He's had more than 32 top 10 country hits, including the popular favorite, Funny How Time Slips Away. And he's here tonight to sing another of his big hits. Please make welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Walker. I'd like to be in Charlie's shoes, that's what I always say. He had you and everything tied with a gold thread. Charlie loved and he went away in what I got today. Well, it wasn't long till I was walking around in Charlie's shoes. Now I'm wearing out the shoes that Charlie wore. Just walking back and forth across the floor. The troubles that grow him away, I've got more company. These nights in Charlie's shoes are killing me. The greater grass that turned my head so swiftly to turn brown. I'm wearing out the shoes that Charlie wore Just walking back and forth across the floor But troubles that roll them away I've got more company These nights in Charlie's shoes are killing me song that was real good to us, thanks to all you nice people.
The old rhyming's a little empty and a little lonely today, isn't it, though? Certainly is, Teddy. But just think of the happy hours that were spent here. Uncle Dave Macon, Roy Acuff, uh, Furnace Tub, Minnie Pearl, Jim Reeves, Patsy Klein, the all-time greats appeared right here on the same board you're standing on. They sure did. You know, one of the greatest, fondest memories, I guess, was the final time we got to appear in this building because we were going to move to our new Grand Ole Opry house. And that was March the 15th, 1974. What time we were? 9 to 9.30 p.m. Well, Ted, whether it's the stage of the old Grand Ole Opry House or the new Grand Ole Opry House, it's always a privilege and a pleasure to be a part of the world-famous Grand Ole Opry. And now, a great big welcome for Teddy and Doyle, the Wilburn Brothers. Grand Ole Opry, we're all just one big happy family. One of our favorite family members here at the Grand Ole Opry, ladies and gentlemen, is Charlie Luber. Charlie was raised in the small rural town of Pinnaker, Alabama. In 1955, as a part of the Lubin Brothers, he joined the Grand Ole Opry and then went solo in 1964. With more than 13 hit albums to his credit, Charlie has collected many fans. That lonesome sound of the Deep South is a big part of his music. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Lubin. You sure have two pretty girls. They look a lot like me. There's a picture of my boy. We made the day. I can't believe you're standing here It's been a long, long time You know, just the other day You were on my mind I'm glad you found Still I wish that 
could touch the memory It just won't go away Heard his tears Thank you very kindly, we appreciate that. Just as famous as the Grand Ole Opry and a tradition in Nashville for many, many years is the Ernest Tubb Record Shop. I'm hoping and I'm praying as my heart breaks right in two. Walk in the floor over you, come in your house. Welcome to the Ernest Tubb Midnight Jamboree. We're going to be around for the next hour with some great country music. Back in 47, my dad opened the first Ernest Tubb record shop and started a live radio show called The Midnight Jamboree, which is almost as much a tradition as the Grand Ole Opry itself. And it's hard to think of anybody who hasn't been on the show at one time. I can remember Hank and Lefty both being on the show back in the early days. And a lot of people like Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline, Jeannie Shepard, uh, have been on the show before they became big stars. And I can remember Back in 1954, Elvis Presley came to town for an appearance on the Opry, and after the Opry came over and appeared on the Midnight Show and almost caused a riot. But uh, these kind of memories and tradition are connected with the Midnight Jamboree, and it started 34 years ago and still goes on today after the Grand Ole Opry every Saturday night, and I hope will go on for many more years. And now, here's Justin Tubb. Trying to change us, saying we've been to country too long. They tell me from now on the word is progressive, but I won't sell out for a song. I grew up when Roy and E.T. and Kitty and Lefty and Hank were. Let's just make it better It's 
gotten a smile for now. I am what I am, and I'm proud that I am. What's wrong with the way that we're doing it now? Well, the sad part about it is all of the fans. country, whether concert or honky-tonk joints. So give this a listen, and then if you won't play it, my friend, you're just proving the point. Opry star Jan Howard has three big loves in her life, her music and her two lovely grandchildren. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in West Plains, Missouri. There she is, right there. And she dreamed of being a singer. And she moved to California, where one day she started recording. She recorded the first time with a young man by the name of Wynn Stewart. And that's him right there. And there's her first publicity picture. See that? And then she went on to record on her own for Decca Records. And look at that hair. <laughs> look, isn't that funny? That's where she kept all of her fan mail. <laughs> right. And then she was very honored and privileged to become a she member. She looks like you, Casey. Uh, she does, right. Well, she became a member of the Grand Ole Opry. And then she was a member of a television show. She was part of... Barbara Mandel. Right. She worked with a lot of her good friends. There's Barbara and Bill Anderson. And this is King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. And one day she was singing on the Grand Ole Opry and she had a surprise guest. Do you know who Mitzi. that is? That's Mitzi. And that's Jenna. Right. That's Jenna. And do you know what? I love you. That's Ben. Please make welcome to our Grand Ole Opry stage, Miss Jan Howard. You say I need a rest, why don't I go and see my sister way out west? I've been there. That's very thoughtful of you, dear, and I'm really touched with all this tenderness. Things and we know that men aren't born with wings. What's making you so kind? Now I'm not smart, but I'm not blind, and I think that you've got evil on your mind. You think that you've been good about as long as most red blooded men could. We've been together for so long, I know another pastor.
I'm just so proud to be here. I'm really proud to be here. I'm really proud to be anywhere at my age, but I'm particularly proud to introduce this wonderful act coming up next, the Vic Willis Trio. Now, this is one of the freshest, most exciting sounds that we've had come to the Opry in a long, long time, and I'm so happy to see it happen. Of course, I knew Vic back when he was with the Willis Brothers, and I met him, oh, a long time ago when uh, they were just kids and I was just maybe a little older. But uh, Vic has come up now with a new sound and a great sound. It's an exciting sound. The voices blend so beautifully together, and of course, Vic's accordion sort of spikes the whole thing up. And so I want you to sit back and enjoy this now because you're going to like this act. And I, I want to say I'm proud to introduce them. The Vic Willis Trio. Thank you, Cousin Minnie we would like, We would like at this time to do a song that concerns the Civil War and with the help of Curtis Young and C.W. Mitchell. Uh, the Civil War concerns everyone, whether they're from the North and the South. It relates to all of us, the American Trinity. In the land of cotton Old times there Are not forgotten Look away Look away Look away Dixie land Oh, I wish I was in Dixie Away, away In Dixie land I'll make my stand To live and die in Dixie Cause Dixie land That's where I was born Early Lord, one frosty morning, look away, look away, look away, Dixie Land.
And now, from Las Vegas, Nevada, here's Miss Loretta Lynn. You know, when I was asked to introduce this next act, I was very honored because this next act means more to me than just about anybody in the world right now. Uh, when I first come to the Grand Ole Opry, Ernest Tubb was the one that introduced me on stage for the first time. And when he was asked uh, by the record label who he would like to record with, he said, Loretta Lynn, I was a nobody. And I guess that's something I'll never forget. Ernest Tubb has helped more people in country music than all the other country music artists put together. I love him very much. His name is Ernest Tubb. I'm walking the floor over you. I can't sleep a wink, that is true. I'm hoping and I'm praying as my heart breaks right in two. Walking the floor over you. You left me and you went away. You said you'd be back in just a day. You broke in your promise and you left me here alone. I don't know why you did, dear, but I do know that you're gone. I'm walking the floor over you. I can't sleep away, that is true. I'm hoping and I'm praying as my heart breaks right in two. Walking the floor over thank all of my country music friends for joining me on this special TV program by Cracky. Let's, let's just say one thing on behalf of all of us here on the show. We just say thanks a lot, if you will, all right? Sorry that you made me cry. You said I deserve just what I got. Well, if that's how you feel, I thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. I got a broken heart. That's all I've got. You made me cry. Thanks a lot. Ah, oh, Pete Mitchell. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I got a broken heart. That's all I've got. You made me cry. And I cried a lot. I lost your love. Honey, thanks a lot.